Good evening, and welcome to Wheaton High School's Virtual Open House. We are so excited to have you here tonight and to speak to you about our programs and the amazing opportunities we offer students um, in the DCC. Tonight's presentation will focus on our academies and our Wheaton Edison programs. My name is Lisa Gerhardt, and I'm the Academies Coordinator and the Applications Coordinator here at Wheaton High School. Like all schools in the DCC, Wheaton High School is academically centered around four academies, our Bioscience Academy, Engineering Academy, Computer Science or AOIT Academy, and our Global Studies Academy. Along with these four academies, we have two application-only programs, our biomedical program and our engineering application program. Starting last year, we started a partnership with Thomas Edison and aligned four, the four academies with four of their programs. And so we also offer that as our Wheaton Edison partnership. You'll hear a little bit more about that later on tonight. Right now, what we wanna do is focus not on our application programs, and not on our Wheaton Edison programs, but talk to you about the academies. Our academy leaders are here tonight and will share with you their passion for their academies and will tell you a little bit more about what is each academy all about. We'll first hear from the Academy of Information Technology leader, Ms. Emily Dunbar. Hi everyone, and welcome to Wheaton High School's Academy of Computer Science. My name is Emily Dunbar. I am the Academy Leader, and I am so excited to share some information about our amazing Academy with you. I'm going to go through a little bit about why our Academy exists, and then I'll walk you through the two different pathways that are offered at Wheaton High School. So first of all, who are we? Why are we here? Um, and to kick us off, I will tell you that our Academy of Computer Science is made up of teachers and students who are so passionate about computer science. We work so hard to create meaningful and challenging opportunities for our students on a daily basis. And those opportunities come in the classroom and they come outside of the classroom, whether it's after school activities and clubs or opportunities and competitions that we um, push our students to participate in. We are so proud of the work we do, and I'm really excited to um, go through a little bit about our program with you this evening. I wanted to start with the two pathways that students can choose from when they join our academy. Um, we're broken down into a programming pathway and a web design pathway. And you can see that both pathways are made up of four courses. So in the ninth through 12th grade, um, students are in the Academy of Computer Science are expected to complete four courses along whichever pathway they choose. If a student decides they wanna take one or two courses on the other pathway, they're more than welcome to, but they must complete four in a row from one of the pathways. So let's dig in a little deeper. Let's start with the first course that all students take in ninth grade, and that's AP Computer Science Principles. All students start in this class. It's a great place to bring all those skills that um, perhaps students have gained in middle school or in other activities, or if students are brand new to computer science, it's a great, great place to start. It's our foundation course. What we do is we bring all those skills together um, and we make sure they have a great foundation to build off of. You can see in the units that are listed, we go everywhere from digital information, the internet, to really digging into programming through building apps. Students create amazing projects in this course, like apps that um, can track all sorts of um, fitness data to apps that will connect you with your local representatives. It's pretty amazing the work that we see. After this course, students do make the choice on whether they want to be in the programming or the web design pathway. So here's the programming pathway. It includes three courses, all in Java. So our goal is really to give students a great experience with Java so that if they do pursue computer science after high school, or even if they go into another field, they have a really strong programming background. So it starts with programming one, that's the basics. And then we build again into um, AP Computer Science A, also known as AP Java. Still, we're working on those Java skills. And then lastly, Students can select to take programming three during their senior year. It is one of our capstone course choices. So they can get three full years of Java if um, programming is their thing. Our other pathway, the web design pathway has two courses. 
Students would start in 11th, or excuse me, in 10th grade with website development, learning the basics. How do I design a website? They would create a storyboard and then use HTML, CSS, and Java to make that website come to life. Then they could continue on in their 11th grade year with advanced digital tools. And this would really help them to refine those skills, deepen those skills, and um, work with groups in order to build a website for an actual client. You'll notice that for both pathways, the 12th grade year includes something called a capstone course. Students have options here. Um, they can choose any one of the options that are listed on your screen. And really, we encourage them to choose something that is most meaningful to them, something they're most excited about and is really going to benefit them in their future. So we have internships. That's something we highly encourage students to do, whether they are computer science focused at a local business, or even if it's a project on campus that they're working on. As we said before, we've got programming three. Students can also join the cybersecurity capstone course at Edison. And they can even select to do a Montgomery College course. And actually, they do one per semester. So they could get up to six credits in their senior year towards Montgomery College. And I should um, also mention that um, all of our other courses, AP Computer Science Principles and Computer Science A, also lead to credit from Montgomery College. So a student can leave our program with up to 12 credits in computer science. The Academy of Computer Science works closely with our community partners to make our program a success. We work with community partners throughout the school year. Um, we bring people in as guest speakers, mentors, and we have partners that serve as internship supervisors for our students out in the community. Our goal is for our students to see a variety of different computer science careers so that they can start to make connections to where they fit in the big picture. Um, with that being said, we are always seeking new mentors, speakers, and internship sites. And if you have any great ideas or know someone who wants to get involved, um, please reach out. My email will be on the next slide. You can see in some of the photos that are on this screen, um, we have a guest speaker that joined us that interned at Google and Microsoft to share with students, how do you secure that dream internship and what is it like? Um, in the bottom picture, we had students presenting their projects to mentors and getting some feedback on what they had created. And then lastly, we had a virtual presentation from a professional in the cybersecurity field who was sharing what it was like to do the job that he did. And the students really had a great time asking questions um, and learning about the different scenarios that he was working in. That brings me to the end of our presentation, but I know you might have more questions or want some more information. So please keep in touch by reaching out by email. Um, I've listed my email address there. Again, my name is Emily Dunbar. I'm the Academy Leader. And then I've also listed Lisa Gerhardt, our Academy Coordinator at Wheaton High School. Her email is also there. Please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, we'd be happy to answer specific questions that you or your student might have. And I really hope that we get to see you um, in the near future. Thank you. And now we will hear from Ms. Jeanette Cruz, our Bioscience Academy leader. Good evening. My name is Jeanette Cruz, and I'm the leader of the Bioscience Academy. I want to start by thanking you for joining us tonight to get a glimpse of the amazing experiences that are taking place here at Wien High School. Our students in the Bioscience Academy are able to explore a variety of careers throughout their time here at Wien. Our hands-on curriculum allows students to learn to work collaboratively to solve problems such as how to best treat and prevent heart disease, how to control an outbreak on a college campus, and how to address the health needs of specific communities. Professionals from NIH, private practice, and medical institutions come and speak to our students within classrooms and as lunch nerds, a lunchtime opportunity open to all bioscience students. Each course strongly embeds the skills students need to have in order to be successful in college. Students will be able to add these skills to their academic resumes when applying to colleges and internships, as these are the very same skills that colleges want to see on resumes, and these are the skills that will help them stand out from other students. By the time they complete their four years in bioscience, in the Bioscience Academy, students will have gained professional skills that include group collaboration, time management, technical writing, problem solving, lab skills that include bacterial plating, 
micropipetting, gel electrophoresis, DNA extraction, and so many more. As you can see, the students leave the Bioscience Academy prepared to excel. So there are four courses in the Bioscience Academy. Students take one course each year, starting with Principles of Biomedical Science. During their time in PBS, students will be solving a medical mystery, diagnosing and treating patients, tracking down the source of an outbreak, and designing solutions to solve medical problems, all the while building a foundation of biological concepts. PBS supports the core biology curriculum by exposing students to similar concepts, but in a more project-based manner. The next course in the sequence is Human Body Systems. In this class, the students focus on learning about how the individual body systems work together to support life. Through projects and models, students study how the body reacts in times of extreme stress to maintain health. The third class, Medical Interventions, builds on the skills and content that they learned in their prior classes. While following a very unfortunate fictitious family, the students look at how medicine can be used in the diagnosis, treatment, and prevention of various illnesses. They perform current laboratory protocols that are used in research labs today, such as PCR, gene purification, ELISA, and microarrays. In their capstone course, Biomedical Innovation, the students are challenged to, to develop an independent project around something they have become passionate about. Our students are amazing, and they are recognized for their amazing skills and talents with scholarships and admissions to top internships and universities. While I can only give you a quick snapshot demonstrating the uniqueness of our academy, I hope our video showcasing some of our bioscience students hard at work will spotlight the types of projects and activities that we complete in this pathway. Thank you very much. Now we will hear from Mr. Rich Scott, our Engineering Academy leader. Hello everyone, my name is Rich Scott and I am the leader of the Engineering Academy at Wheaton High School. If you are an eighth grade student who thinks using math and science to create solutions to problems sounds interesting, then I invite you to consider engineering. Wheaton High School offers seven engineering classes and I will describe each of them on the next slide. These classes all offer a lot of hands-on applications of the topics they teach. Many of them offer college credit for students whose grades and exam scores are high enough. The first class in the sequence is Introduction to Engineering Design, or IED. In IED, students experience the engineering design process and learn computer-aided design. They apply math, science, and engineering standards to hands-on projects like designing a new toy or improving an existing product. After IED, students take Principles of Engineering, or POE. Here, students explore mechanisms, the strength of structures and materials, and automation. They apply what they know with multiple hands-on challenges like designing a self-powered car. After POE, the next required class is digital electronics. In digital electronics, students learn the foundations of computing by designing and building electronic circuits which can make logical decisions. The next three courses are electives. Students in the engineering programs need to take one, not all of them. The first elective is civil engineering and architecture. Students in this class learn important aspects of building and site design and development, and they apply what they know to design commercial and residential buildings. Another engineering elective is aerospace engineering. Here, students explore the physics and physiology of flight. They create many hands-on projects like a glider, a bottle rocket, a parachute, and more. A class which is new to Wheaton is Computer Integrated Manufacturing. Students in SIM discover and explore manufacturing processes, product design, robotics, and automation. They apply what they have learned to design their own manufacturing process. The final engineering class is our capstone, Engineering Design and Development, or EDD. In EDD, students identify a real-world challenge and then research, design, and test a solution 
ultimately presenting their unique solutions to a panel of engineers. EDD is the closest students will come to real world engineering of any high school class I've ever seen. Wheaton High School also offers several after school opportunities for students to stay involved with science, technology, engineering, and math. I don't have time to get into details about each club, but I will leave this list up for you to read. As you can see, we have a lot of different opportunities in architecture, construction, robotics, electric vehicles, and many other areas. And now we will hear from Toby Mason, our Global Studies Academy leader. Hello, my name is Toby Mason. I am the leader of the Global Studies Academy. I am also uh, a member of the Social Studies Department. I teach AP Psychology, Student Leadership, and I am the Wheaton SGA Advisor. Filmmaker and Star Wars creator George Lucas once said, the sciences are the how and the humanities are the why. Why are we here? Why do we believe in the things we believe in? I don't think we can have the how without the why. And that is exactly what we do here at Wheaton High School. We explore the why. The diversity of study provided by the Global Studies Academy prepares students for today's global economy in which many companies are looking for employees who are nimble, curious, and innovative. Our students leave Wheaton with the skills to work collaboratively, think broadly, and challenge conventionality in preparation for whatever the future may bring. These talents help humanities graduates at every stage of their working life, from the interview process to the corporate boardroom. Here at Wheaton, the, United, the Global Studies Academy has a immense range of courses that our students have the opportunity to explore. From over 45 different elective courses to choose from, our students have the freedom to take an art class, history course, and continue their world language education all in the same school year. One of the prides of the Global Studies Academy is the flexibility and freedom our students have within the academy to study content that is of interest to them. For us in the Global Studies Academy, the world is our classroom and we have a very unique selection of courses our students have the advantage of experiencing. During the ninth grade year, Global Studies Academy students are highly encouraged to register for our Global Issues Social Studies Collective. In this class, we strive to understand worldwide issues such as war, terrorism, global economy, human rights, migration, and much more. We attempt to map global change and globalization, as well as keep abreast with current events as they develop. Through project-based learning, we will explore how politics, geography, economics, culture, and the environment are all interconnected. Even if you end up dead set on one of Wheaton's other academies, I highly recommend you check out our Global Studies Academy page on the DCC Open House website. Many students in our academy, or I'm sorry, many students in other academies find ways to squeeze Global Studies elective courses into their schedule, hoping to build on those previously stated humanities electives. In fact, just last year, we had 25 dual completers. They were completers from other academy. They completed either the Bioscience, Engineering, AOIT, and the Global Studies Academy. Totally awesome. So I am so excited that you chose to attend Wheaton High School's virtual open house and hope you find your home with the Global Studies Academy. If you have any questions or would like to talk further, please check out our page on the DCC Open House website. You can also email me. My email address is right here, toby.r.mason at mcpsmd.net. I also encourage you to check out our Global Studies YouTube playlist. Um, the link is right there, but it's also on our uh, DCC Open House uh, GSA page. Highly recommend you check that out and see some of our amazing, talented GSA students in action. All right. Hope you uh, have a great rest of your evening and go Knights.
Next, we'll hear from Heather Correas and Dr. Sharon Carlton about the Wheaton Edison Partnership Program. This is something that started last year with our incoming freshmen this year. Welcome, my name is Heather Correas and I am the principal intern at Thomas Edison High School of Technology. Welcome, my name is Dr. Sharon Carlton and I'm the program coordinator at Thomas Edison High School of Technology. It is our pleasure to tell you about the fantastic opportunity available for eighth grade students to join us at the Wheaton Edison Partnership. This partnership is an interest-based opportunity for students. Your selection to participate will be based on a lottery and there are no pre-qualifications other than your interest. In order to be considered, select which program or programs within this partnership you would want to participate. The Wheaton Edison Partnership allows you to become a Wheatonite and receive automatic enrollment into Thomas Edison High School of Technology for your junior and or senior year. The Thomas Edison programs are listed below. Healthcare professions, hospitality tourism management program, information technology and cybersecurity, and construction management and architecture. On this slide, you can see how we've combined the Wheaton High School Academies with the Thomas Edison Pathways. In each of these programs, you would lay a foundation for your content and your knowledge at Wheaton High School and continue on at Thomas Edison, where you would earn certifications, internships, and the opportunities for college credit. Our Bioscience and Health Professions program will allow students the opportunity to be certified as medical and nursing assistants as a result of completing courses and passing professional exams. The four-year plan here shows how you would start with the Project Lead the Way courses in ninth and 10th grade, learning about disease and the homeostasis of the body, and then follow that with more in-depth and hands-on study at Edison in your 11th and 12th grade year. The second pathway is the Global Studies, Hospitality, and Tourism Management Program. This course of study brings an international perspective to travel, tourism, and management. There are industry partners like Marriott International that are partners in student success within the program. These students learn the latest in extraordinary skills, I'm sorry, extraordinary skills, and also methods to navigate the industry. The Wheaton courses include global issues and world language economics and Edison's hospitality and tourism courses. Another opportunity that has been created for you through this partnership is to complete the cutting edge information technology pathway that culminates in either network operations and cybersecurity or cybersecurity, the choice is yours. This pathway develops critical thinking, problem solving, ethics and computing skills. You would start off at Wheaton with your code.org AB computer science principles and follow that with computer programming and Java and then the opportunity to culminate at Edison High School with cybersecurity where you would learn, earn the CompTIA certification. This slide and the next will detail engineering, construction management and architecture and its pathway. Students will complete two Project Lead the Way engineering courses at Wheaton and then they will pursue two years of the following areas. Masonry, architecture, plumbing, carpentry, electricity, and heating and ventilation at Thomas Edison. These programs offer certifications, lead to Montgomery College articulation, and four-year university pursuits. The 
The Wheaton Edison Partnership is for highly motivated students who enjoy hands-on collaborative learning approaches. There are four pathways and 25 spots per pathway. Again, this opportunity is open to any eighth grader in the following clusters, the Down County Consortia, the Northeastern Consortia, Sherwood High School, Rockville, Walter Johnson, Church Hill, Bethesda Chevy Chase, Walt Whitman, or Wooten. It's a lottery-based program. When accepted into the program, students will attend academy programs at Wheaton during ninth and 10th grade years. When you complete the program, you will be a dual completer for finishing the Wheaton Edison Partnership. The potential of this program is that students will be completers and graduate from Wheaton High School as well have benefited from the Thomas Edison programs. Here is our application timeline. Pay close attention. Today, we're actually at the beginning point, which is open house. This is where everything starts. You are to go to the Down County Consortium office website and apply. Apply as, as soon as possible because the deadline is November the 6th. Again, the deadline is November the 6th. The lottery, will take place in November and December. And in December and January, parents and students will receive results. So let's talk about how you choose Wheaton High School now that we've talked you into it. So on your DCC choice form, this will come through the parent view and it's based on your home address and the middle school that you are choosing. You wanna make sure you choose Wheaton High School as number one. You're, you will be ranking all five high schools in the, in the DCC um, and you can't leave any of them blank. So you really do need to make a decision about which is your first choice, your second choice, your third choice, your fourth choice, and your last choice. There's no guarantee that you'll get your first choice, but go ahead and put in your first choice, your second choice, third, fourth, and fifth, and make sure you remember to have Wheaton High School as your first choice. Let's talk about some important dates. October 9th, that's the first date and the eligibility report will be seen in parent view and student view. This is the report that tells you what programs you are eligible for in terms of applying for. And that's also based on your residence, um, your address, and also what middle school you're attending. November 6th, the, all applications are due, your DCC choice forms and your applications for any criteria-based or interest-based lottery programs are due at that time. By December 6th, your teacher recommendations are due, but you don't have to do anything about that at this point. In late January, you will receive notification. The notification will come two different ways, through email and also through snail mail or MCP, um, <laughs> USPS mail. In this notification, you will be either invited to participate in the programs, be on the wait pool, be on the wait list, or decline. Once you know what you want to then once you get your invitations, then you get to make the decisions. Once again, you're going to apply in parent view. So all of the applications occurs in parent view, not in student view. Look on the left hand column for a documents folder. In there will be the complete application. It's all done online this year, including the written components and the teacher recommendations. Will there be a test? We don't know. MCPS is still in the process of deciding whether or not they um, will include an outside test like the COGAT test that they've done in the past. Again, keep in mind, November 6th is the application deadline. So lots of parents start to get really confused really quickly and they say, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. So let me see if I can help you through. The first thing you wanna do is read your eligibility report. Identify the areas you definitely are interested in, and maybe identify some programs you definitely are not interested in. That's okay. It's good to be able to narrow the selection because you'll see that you are able to be in, um, to select a lot of different programs. So it's nice to be a little bit selective. Second thing you want to do is complete the choice form. So this is the first form you're really completing. And again, that tells you which high school do you want to attend. And that may be, which high school do you want to attend if you don't get into any of the programs you're trying to get into? So keep that in mind. So the choice program is really important. 
Then after you do that, you're going to apply to the programs. So these are two separate forms. One is the choice form and one is the applications. In the applications, you can apply for both criteria based where you are completing an application and filling in a little bit more detail. Or you can say you are interested in it and do the interest based lottery. All you have to do for those are just check off the ones that sound interesting to you. Again, the deadline is Friday, November 6th. Students, you know the difference between a due date and a deadline. This is the deadline. In terms of who do you contact with all of the questions that you still may have, if it's a specific question about Wheaton High School, you can contact the Academy leaders. If it's about our application programs, feel free to contact me, Lisa Gerhardt. If it's about the Wheaton Edison program, you can contact Dr. Cheryl Carl Sharon Carlton. And what if you have a question that's unique to you because perhaps maybe you moved or your child took a course somewhere else or there's something that's really specific to your child and you're not quite sure how the programs apply to you, then you want to address that, those questions to the DC CAPS office. They are in charge of all of this process and they can handle all of the details and the nitty gritty details if you aren't sure. I invite you to first take a look at our Wheaton High School website and look at the Open House 2020 tab at the top. This will bring you to a website that was created specifically for this purpose to help parents navigate through this very confusing process. On this website, you will find on these web pages, you will find information about our application pro programs, our biomedical and engineering programs, all of our academies, as well as the Wheaton Edison Partnership programs. You'll also see lots of videos embedded around, um, around the website as well. So if you don't want to sit through this whole thing, but you still want to see what was on bioscience, you can go back to the bioscience webpage and the, the video is there. We look forward to greeting you next year and calling you a night. Thank you so much for joining us this evening.